Yeah. I have a question. Did you steal anything from the set? I tried to get the keyboard and they wouldn't give it to me. They archived it. <laughs> Are you kidding? It. Yeah. I said, okay, do you want anything from the set? And I said, I kind of would like to have the steampunk <laughs> keyboard. No. Anything else that you would like to do? <laughs> I said, I've been here five years, 16 hours a day, five days a week, you know, six months a year. I'd, I'll pay for the keyboard if that's what. <laughs> no, no. I said, what do you mean, no, no? They said, it's, it's been archived. I oh. said, the NBC Universal Archive people, they, they're kind of like those characters in the Harry Potter movies that work in the bank. <laughs> <laughs> those kinds of creatures. <laughs> yeah, what are they called? Those oh, creatures. Go, well, they're goblins. They're goblins. Yeah, they're goblins. And they, they're, that they're, they're describes, goblins. yeah. And, and they, they, they're the, they're the, they come in to a set everywhere that's being shot, and with fingers that are like this long, they take me. And they <laughs> it's it's me at somebody's, somebody's kid's room right now. <laughs> no, I think that there was actually, I wish that were the case. I wouldn't mind. You mean there's a real I warehouse? I mean, if it were actually in. <laughs> exactly. Yes, if there is a real <laughs> warehouse. warehouse. If there was in a kid's room, okay, I get it. Steal it for your kid. They're not stealing it for their kids. They're what? taking it for a corporation. <laughs> but what do they do with it? They hoard they put it. it in a warehouse. They put it in a warehouse. <laughs> and it's, it, they put it in a warehouse and they box it up. <laughs> and they put it on a shelf without a label. Somebody should make a series about that. Yeah. <laughs> I got uh, the Tesla rifle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Did you really? Nice. One made in the whole wide world. Oh. And I got everybody to sign it. <laughs> and I'm going to sell it. Oh. I'll bet you get $2. And then I, have, Rep, I have, I have uh, three syllables for him. Replica. Oh. No. <laughs> if only it no, worked. Not replica. Eddie's coming. Don't give him the real one. We're <laughs> archiving. <laughs> archiving the real what one. We're think? going to give him a replica. Oh, well, the last season, instead of the the um, rubber purple gloves, because we all have oh, our yeah. hands yeah. sweating in there. You know how they... And so we got uh, special made purple gloves with this little insignia. I and you're going to on eBay sell them. <laughs> and, and then at the last the last day, I was like, "Hey guys, listen, I need a I need a script. Uh, will you sign it? I'm gonna I'm gonna keep send it, it to my... charity." And you're gonna put it on eBay and sell, sell it. it. Oh. <laughs> no, you're not. He's no, not. He's not. No, no. What are you guys gonna miss most about this working on the show? I miss working with these two. <laughs> well, with everyone, Thank everyone you. on the show. Paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> I just said it louder. You would have got the laugh. Uh, you know, uh, for me, career. Cur Gonna miss that. <laughs> job, job, miss security job security. First. I mean, you know, to I could wax poetic. Poetic. I thought you were going in a completely <laughs> different direction. I could wax my butt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wish you would. <laughs> How she knows that is Everybody really not that. something I want to go into. Let's talk about Harry Gum. I wasn't going to go into the Harold Harry Gum story, but now that the press is here, oh, I think no, that that would be we apt. Can't. You'll get in trouble. Uh, not really. At this point, you know, gives a shit. What are they going to cancel us? A... <laughs> we were working in, in the uh, train station, and I was supposed to be kind of undercover, so I had a pair of overalls on. <laughs> and normally, the guys that wear over, overalls, apparently, like the, po the pockets, you can reach <laughs> through and into your pants pockets. So there's no real pockets in the overalls. And I just had, like, my underwear on under there. It was hot in Toronto. It was. It was really hot. Well, as if that was an explanation. And I was, I was bored. So <laughs> I was, like, kind of playing pocket pool. Kind of, and then I realized how uh, elongated my scrotum was. <laughs> so I grabbed it and I pulled it up, and I was like pulling it out of my pocket. <laughs> and I had an idea. And I walked over to our wardrobe uh, mistress, and I was like, "You have to know Heather. She's like, she's so sweet, so sweet, so like, sweet, so Holly. sweet." And so, Wait, very Canadian, and she's from we shot in Canada. So everything is oh, sorry, 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 <laughs> sorry. Is she's sorry okay? for everything. And, sorry, and I, and I said to her, "I go, Heather, someone left gum in these overalls." And she was like, "Oh, that's terrible, Eddie. Let me see, let me see." And I go, "Look at it. It's all it's hair. It's all hairy, hairy gum." And she goes, "Oh." <laughs> Did he just show me his penis? I was like, no, that's my scrotum. 
So. And that was the end of that story. <laughs> that's the story. And that's the story. And you yourself can do this at home. Right. <laughs> he tells me this story before I have this one close-up so? where I'm supposed to be looking at this painting so? and be all pensive and everything. Yeah. And he tells me the story yeah. just before my close-up. <laughs> well, what else is he supposed to do? <laughs> when is a better time? Welcome to the warehouse. Welcome yes. to the warehouse. This is what we do with Welcome each other. Welcome to the show. You may see my bag later. Yeah. <laughs> And you that's make for public that. consumption. <laughs> so what we don't tell you, you can only imagine how bad the stories actually get. Obviously, there's only so much you can say at this point, but are you happy with how your characters end up? Oh, yeah. They, yeah. Did, a, they did a great thing for us. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, um, you know, they were going to cancel the show outright. And... Uh, and uh, Jack Kenny, our, our showrunner, basically said to Mark Stern, "If you if you cancel this show right now, um, your your audiences will will abandon you." Mark Stern you, runs the network because you know already what happened with Eureka and uh, with some of the other shows, you know, um, and and uh, so they. They gave us the six episodes to, to wrap things up, and I, you know, I was upset because the show was getting canceled, and I called Jack, and I was like, so what are you going to do, huh? Are you going to kill us? Are you going to kill us all? Are you going to kill us? Are you going to kill the warehouse? And he's like, no, we've already killed everybody a few times. And uh, he's like, no, we've got this idea about how we're going to end it. He he started telling me the story, and at the, by the end, I was just like, in, almost in tears. I was just like, wow, I, Okay. And uh, and I, I think everybody ends up where they should, should be. And to give Mark, Mark Stern his credit, because this is a public forum and both of us would like to work again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but no, the, here's the truth. He didn't have to convince Mark Stern of anything. This is Mark Stern no, no, uh, no. created the show. Uh, before there was a Jack Kenny, Saul Rubinette Kelly, who had him included, anyway, anybody. He was, he was the one who first got pitched it and made sure it was developed. He loved the show more than anybody. Mm -hmm. Uh, the problem was it was a numbers game, and all that Jack was doing with Mark Stern was giving him ammunition so Mark could go fight. And Mark fought a good fight, and he managed, instead of us getting, which is what they wanted to do, was cancel us completely after episode after season 4B. Comcast. Um, and, yeah, so the, the multinational corporation, which has other fish to fry, other fish to fry is actually what they're called corp, limited, <laughs> other fish to fry, limited. And so, listen, it's a bean counter game in some sometimes. Hey, I was sometimes. cheap. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and she still is. Like, we were all, it wasn't us, you know. The money was on the screen, man. Yeah. And it was like, we were, Mark got, said no, and he, he made them stay up. Uh, it was, it was people staying up all night and working the numbers and figuring out a way so that we could, how many episodes can we do? Is it five? Is it four? Is it six? Is it eight? And it turned out to be six episodes that I could they could afford to do. And you got to remember, it is the most expensive show that they've ever done in their history. More expensive wow. than Battlestar Galactica. More expensive than Eureka. More expensive than Defiance. Wow. One of the reasons that we're more expensive than Ghost Hunters. No. <laughs> and so, well, nothing is more expensive in many ways spiritually than Ghost Hunters. There is a so and emotionally. Uh, yeah. So he fought. And uh, we are thrilled. Uh, and this isn't like, a, I know we're, we're, we're on the press. If you got me privately, I would say, this isn't a political statement. Um, it, we, we, we were all touched and moved by the fight and moved by the beautiful writing. And I think our fans, I know our fans, are going to be a feel uh, a sense of completion and a sense of continuity. I'm going to say, uh, here, here's what I think about the ending. It, it, it like all really good stuff that's written. It's both surprising and inevitable at the same time. It's both. I'm really proud of that. Right? Mm, yeah. Yeah. 